All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to sample the Akronin Diffrips. We're going to go ahead and load a flight, a sample flight from Vegas to LA. And we're just going to run through the acronym D-I-F-R-I-P-P-S. So when you get into the airplane and the McDo menu here is available, the first thing you want to do is select the FMGC button right here at one left. Now, as you can see, the airplane that you're in should pop up on the top. If you're in an A320, you want to verify that. If you're in an A319, you'd want to verify that. And that would also correspond to the proper engine. The V2527 would be for the 320. And then the V252, is it 23? We'll have to, we'll have to, get back. We'll have to verify the uh, 319. Make sure you're in the active nav database that corresponds to the proper date. So today is December 6th, and you can see that 10 November through December 7th is current. If you needed to swap the nav database, you can simply just go ahead and select three left, excuse me, two left, and now you can see it swapped it to 8 December through January 4th. But since that's not the correct date, we'll go ahead and select two left again and put it back on the correct nav database. So now you can see. The active nav database is back to 10 November through 7 December. Now, if you look here on the flight plan, it's going to be flight 448 going from Vegas to LA. And down here in this rooting part of the flight plan, it's showing here that the idle slash performance should be 0, 4.9. But as the flight manual indicates, we always want to have minus 3.5 in the idle slash performance but as you can see here it's 4.9 so to simply change this 4.9 we have to do something because anytime a number is green it cannot be changed so if you just simply put in UAL into the change code it changes these numbers to blue and we can fix that situation so I want to change 4.6 to say 4.9 so I'm going to hit slant 4.9 and simply go ahead and select that at the 6 left now that is correct for the flight plan for today so that's all you need to do on the data page, which is the first letter difference, the letter D. Now I'm going to move on to I for init. This is what we call the init A page. I'm going to start up here on the right and then sort of work my way back with a backwards U. We are going from LA to Vegas. So we're going to start with K-L-A-S, slant K-L-A-X. And that's our proper from two right over there and one right. If this was first flight of the day, you would have to go into your IRS init, and then there would be an option to align on ref. But since this is a through flight, it's already aligned. Simply go back to the init page. The wind page will come back to tropopause. That's what we want to skip to here. You can see here on the flight plan, it says trope uh, flight level 469. All you need to simply do is type in 469, stick it in, and it'll give you the proper trope. The ground temp would be something you can get simply right off of ATIS. Just say the ATIS said 15 degrees. We can simply stick that in and put it in there, and you can see the numbers went big. Now I know you made a change. The cruise level slash temperature. You can come over here and find that on the flight plan as well. It says flight level 260 minus 23. So 260. I'm going to do a slash, and then I'm going to try just 23 and see if it sticks in the minus for me. And you can see that it does. So you should go ahead and put the minus in, but if you forget, you can see that it does correct the temperature. The cost index is showing 13. I'll simply put that in. And then the flight number, you want to start out with UAL. And then you come up here and you can see where UAL 448. 448. Simply stick that in here. Now, if there is an alternate on the flight plan, it would show on the ladder here, and we'd be able to stick that in as an alternate. But we can go ahead and just pretend that there is one so I can show you how to insert it. Let's pretend that there was San Fred as an alternate and you would simply stick it in there and two left. So that is the I as far as difference go. Now we're going to continue on to the F which is for flight plan. You can see it has the to and the from already built in, the Vegas to LA. So now they're going to plan on, according to the flight plan, departing runway 19 left out of Vegas. So you simply go one left, hit departure, and then you can scroll up. If you visualize that there's a wheel in here, I want to roll the wheel forward, so I'm going to roll it forward and then go ahead and find my runway. 
It's like 19 left. And we're not quite done yet. If we had a PDC, we would use the PDC. But since all we're doing is working with the flight plan right now, we're going to work off the flight plan. The flight plan is showing that we're going to be going off of 19 left via the McCarran out to Hector and then the River Star arrival into Los Angeles. So I'm going to go ahead and try and find the McCarran in the box, which is right here. Select McCarran, and then you can see there are no transitions available, so we are done. You kind of come over here to 6 right, insert it, and then it brings you back to the flight plan page. And it inserted 19 left McCarran, and then it just has a heading of 220. And if you view the SID, you would see that that corresponds to the SID. Now I want to stick in the arrival with the transition off of LA. You simply come over to 6 left, select LAX, 1 right for the arrival. You could pick the runway. You don't have to at this point, but if you like to, you can. We're planning a landing at runway 25 left in Los Angeles. So again, I will scroll up, find the runway that we're planning on landing at, ILS 25 left. Now the stars are available on the left-hand side. I'm gonna simply scroll up yet again. Turn back to the page where you can see it says the river. Now I'm gonna select the river. And then again, it's the hectic transition. Transitions now pop up on the right hand side and I can select that. So it's ILS 25 left via the River 3 Hector Transition and you insert that. What I always do is I like to push the flight plan key once again and verify that I have from the top all the points that look appropriately. You can see there's the SID transition and then it starts at Hector and it's the river via Hector all the way into runway 25 left. At the end of 25 left, it already inserted the missed approach. What I do before I leave the flight plan is I like to verify the distance. It says 218 miles. And you come on the flight plan and it shows 234. It won't be exact, but you want to make sure that that's sort of a sanity check. Make sure the miles sort of are pretty close. That to me is close enough. So that's DIF. The next key we want to go to is R for RADNAV. You may or may not choose to put anything in on this page. This will sort of be whatever you feel would be appropriate as the pilot. If you can imagine drawing a dividing line right down the middle, the left side would be the captains, the right side would be the first officer. If you find any use in sticking anything on your side or the captain's side, feel free to do that. You can stick uh, something in there that might correlate to a special engine out procedure. The next page in difference would be I again, except now, instead of being on a knit A, we hit I, and then we go to the next page, and that's what we consider to be a knit B. As you can see here, it has zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight CG. The block fuel is what is missing. On the flight plan, the plan gate fuel is 13,000. You can see we already have 13,000 fuel on board. We will be awaiting the fuel sheet shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick in 13,000 here. This will be required so the airplane knows what it weighs when we go to the next page of P for perf. Now, this is showing some alternate fuel on time simply because I stuck an alternate on an NIT-A in San Fran. If you did not have an alternate in there in San Fran, it wouldn't show any alternate numbers at all. If you look at the flight plan, it's showing you're going to get there with a REMF just close to about 8,000 pounds. Right now it's showing missed destination fuel on board 9 about minus 700 extra fuel. That's pretty close to about the 8,000 pounds fuel on board. We don't really need to do anything else on this page at this point, so now we're gonna continue with difference and go to perf. Of course, you would be using your takeoff data message to come up with our V speeds, thrust reduction altitude, acceleration altitude, special engine out acceleration altitude, if there was any, flex temp, flap setting. So I'm just gonna pretend that I had numbers already off of a takeoff data message and just start inserting numbers. Let's pretend that V1 is 141, V2, excuse me, VR is 142, and V2 is 142. We can see that the thrust reduction and acceleration altitudes are slightly different. Let's say it's 2890 slash 2890. You can see when I put these numbers in, it makes them small to big. The engine out acceleration could also be different. I'm not saying these numbers are accurate, but just showing you that you can make them different if that's what your takeoff data message indicates. Flex temp would be something else you'd get off of there. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick a number in flex temp. And the flap setting is something you'd also get off of there. And let's say it was flaps one. Now remember this number 211 by simply putting it in the scratch pad before you go to the next page. 
When we go to the next page, you hit six right for next phase, and this will be our green dot speed. You hit next phase again, usually skip the cruise page, we just let the cost index come up with a managed uh, ECOM cruise speed. Go to the next phase, and what we simply usually just stick in for a descent speed would be 280 knots. You don't need to go any further than that. So now I showed you D, I, F, R, I again for the init B, P. Now we're going to go to P again for Prague, and we're going to verify that our cruise altitude is in. Our recommended maximum altitude is 380, and your optimum, the most fuel efficient altitude, should be somewhere in the middle. That's all you need to do on this page. The last part of diff rips is S, and that's for secondary flight plan. You simply want to do a select key and come over and copy active in case you need to use it later on. So that's the quick and dirty on diff rips. This was a sample of full flight Sim 6 in the car course from Vegas to LA. I hope that helps.